Hello, welcome to NETVN channel. In this video I show you how to build a workgroup file server. I will introduce the basics then add some tips to make it easier for you to manage shared data. File server I use Windows Server Operating System, it is true for most versions of Windows Server Operating System. Let's say I build a file server for two groups named Group 1 and Group 2. Each group has two people, Group 1 has James and Mary, Group 2 has Robert and Jennifer. First of all I create accounts for four people, that is James, Mary, Robert and Jennifer. Next I create two groups as mentioned. Group 1 has two members, James and Mary. Group 2 has two members, Robert and Jennifer. The purpose of the video is that the members of Group 1 cannot access the data of Group 2 and vice versa. More specifically Robert and Jennifer cannot access James and Mary's data and vice versa. After creating the user and group I create the respective folders for each group. In partition D I create a new folder named data. In the data folder I create two subfolders named group 1 and group 2. The folder named Group 1 belongs to Group 1 and the folder named Group 2 belongs to Group 2. After creating the folders I share a folder called Data so that people can discover it over the network. For the folder named data, I set it up to allow anyone to change it. Next I set permissions for the folder named group 1. This is the folder of group 1 so James and Mary have added permission to this folder. You remove the default permission settings for this folder. Then remove the group named users from the list of groups. Next I add groups named group 1 and group 2 to the list of groups. Group 1 and Group 2 have different permissions for the folder named Group 1. Group 1 has added permission to the folder named Group 1. And Group 2 has no permissions to the folder named Group 1. So James, Mary have the right to edit, read and delete for the folder named Group 1, but Robert and Jennifer do not. Same for the folder named Group 2. Robert, Jennifer has the right to edit, read, delete, create new for this folder. And Mary and James don't have any rights to the folder named Group 1. For the folder named Group 2 I remove the group named users from the list. 
Then I add groups named group 1 and group 2 to the list of groups. Next I set edit permission to group 2. Then set deny all permissions of group 2 for this folder. Now from another computer on the internet I access the file server by name. Now from another computer on the internet I access the file server by name. You can use the IP address instead if you want. Here I use James's account in group 1. Because James is in group 1, he can only access the folder named group 1 and is blocked from accessing the folder named group 2. The same thing happened to Mary. In contrast, Robert and Mary can only access the folder named group 2 and are blocked when trying to access the folder named group 1. Going back to the file server, I installed a few more things to make it easier for you to manage shared folders. I install branch cache for network file and install file server as source manager. How do these settings help you? Watch the video to find out. Successful installation. I want the members of group 1 to not be able to discover the folder named group 2 and vice versa. To do so, do the following. For the folder name data you just shared you set up as follows. You tick enable access based enumeration. With this setup Jennifer, Robert can't discover the folder named group 1 because they don't have any permissions for this folder. In contrast James and Mary only discover the folder named group 1 and cannot discover the folder named group 2 because they have only set edit permissions to their folder. I tested with Robert's account in group 2 and only discovered the folder of group 2. The folder where his group is set to edit permissions. Robert can add new files, edit files and delete files if he wants. Next I will set it up so that everyone can access the data even if they are not connected to the server. To do that, map the network drive to the client computer. Here I work with Robert's account of group 2. After mapping the network drive you set it to always available offline. The files will be downloaded to the client and synchronized with each other. When the client is not connected to the server you can still access the files because it has already been downloaded to your computer. When the client connects to the server, the changes are synced to the server. This is very convenient when you work in another place and still access your data and sync it when connected to the server. Robert will disconnect from the file server. Then he created a new file in the folder called group 2.
Because Robert lost connection to the file server, the new file was not uploaded to the file server. But he can still use the files that were pre-downloaded to his computer. After he reconnected to the file server, his new file was synced to the file server. Isn't it great? Robert is very pleased with this. You can do the same for members of both groups. There's one more thing I'd like to set up for group 2's directory. I don't want Jennifer to delete files created by Robert and vice versa. If this happens, it will cause unexpected data loss. To do so, you remove each other's data deletion permission for the folder named Group 2. I set the above permissions for group 2. Now Jennifer will go to the folder named group 2 and try to delete the file created by Robert. This is a file created by Robert. Jennifer cannot delete files created by Robert, she can only delete files created by herself. Likewise, only Robert can delete the file he created and Jennifer cannot. Storage space on file servers is limited so you should set up usage limits for groups. Next, I will set a quota for the folder of group 1. Here the file server already has templates for you to use. But I don't want to use existing templates so I create a new one. I have created a new limit of 300 megabytes with the folder set up. This limit can only upload up to 300 megabytes. This is how you optimize file server resources. I'm going to set a limit just created for the folder named group 1. If everyone uploads multimedia files, it will take up a lot of storage resources. Or people upload executable files that can spread computer viruses. Next I will prevent group 1 members from uploading audio and video files.
James and Mary also cannot upload files with the extension EXE. Next is the setup to generate reports and log events. As such I have set some restrictions on group members 1. They can't upload more than 300 megabytes of data. I will check with James's account. James uploads WinRAR software installation file. Unable to upload because this is an executable file with the extension exe. But he can upload text files because it's unrestricted. James keeps uploading video files. But he can't upload audio and video files as set up in the previous step. The same goes for Mary, because she's in the same group as James. Group 2 members can upload executables and media because I have not set a restriction on the folder named Group 2. Do you want to know how much space groups have used for their folders? To know that you create reports as follows. There are many types of reports that can be generated but I only generate usage quota reports for the folders of the two groups. You set the path to a folder named data. Set the report output time. Set a report export date. I want to have a report two days a week, Sunday and Friday. Let's see what the report will look like. Why only report for directory of group 1? Because I haven't set a limit for group 2. Without this report, I wouldn't have set up a quota for bucket 2. It would be dangerous for the file server storage resources. I will set a limit for the folder of group 2. Thus I introduced the basic steps for building and managing a file server in the work group. Do you have anything to add? Leave a comment. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe.